stock market documentary channel presence. And so why would they be telling us it's 400 for the whole state or 500 now? And then I've called the high schools and it's 200 here, 300 there, 100 here. And that's not counting the elementary schools. And the schools are saying, we need interpreters. We're in a crisis. What's the real number? I don't know. There's articles in mainstream news that planes land at Air Force bases and they just give them IDs and they're just, they're just there. Again, what is, how does this all feed into all these big protectorates uh, like Puerto Rico going completely bankrupt and defaulting and, and now you know, major, from California to Michigan, major municipalities just looting the pension funds and uh, the dot-com bubble uh, part two about to bust according to the Wall Street Journal and the Royal Bank of Scotland saying sell everything, sell everything. That was the headline a month ago, two months ago. Something big is going on. I hope it can be averted or we can have a soft landing. But it's gone from possibility, in my view, to probability that all hell is breaking loose in the next six months to a year. And you see politically the crisis that's going on. There are a lot of forces behind the scenes that I don't encourage Donald Trump to run and, quote, save America. He knows about the globalists. He knows about all the stuff that's happening. Now, is this a double cross by some other crime group? I don't know. I'm just telling you the system is freaking out about Donald Trump. So I want to cover the waterfront and what we have left in this hour. This is a short segment, so you can just intro what he wants to cover with Matt Bracken and how all this ties together and, and how he sees different scenarios unfolding as they militarize and activate the social justice warrior zombies and as they roll out the economic warfare. So, Matt Bracken, glad we got your Skype back up, my friend. Great having you on last week. We got four minutes to break. What's your summation of what you're going to be breaking down today? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great... Uh way to come onto the show is seeing the blue screen of death all Absolutely. the Mac people are saying what's taking you so long okay <laughs> <laughs> right right as i as i booting up skype get the blue screen anyway yeah I, at the end of last hour which is kind of funny because i just lost track of time it was at my end the um cutoff uh no conspiracy that i know of but i wouldn't be surprised on the other hand um i was talking about tsunamis and the waves are coming, the earthquake has already happened way out at sea. And I, and I went back and I looked up this story from 2004. There was a 10-year-old English girl named Tilly Smith. If you Google it or YouTube it, you'll find the, all, the whole thing. And she had just taken a class a month before, and it explained about earthquakes and tsunamis. And she was watching the tide rolling out at a beach in Thailand with her parents. And they're intelligent people. They're grown-ups. They flew her there. And she's telling them, Mom, Dad, this means a tsunami is coming. We have got to go. It took, them, it took this girl 10 minutes to convince her intelligent parents to go back to the hotel. They told staff, a Japanese tourist overheard the word tsunami and said, yes, I think it's tsunami. And that's when the staff finally at that one place started warning everybody. But we know that hundreds of thousands died because nobody knew. Well, a tsunami, an economic tsunami, hasn't hit us in several generations going back to, say, to the 1930s Great Depression. Well, we're watching the water going out. We're seeing these precursors, and we have to be the intelligent English girl and not the dumb parents that are going, what's that mean? The water's going out. Let's go down and take a look at the beached boats. I mean, you would think that intelligent people would understand something so simple. So it's not a surprise completely that the intelligent adults in the room are all saying things are fine. There can't be an economic crash. There are great minds in charge of all of this, and we'll just muddle through. This time, we're not muddling through. The tsunami waves are already on the way, and it's time to head for the high ground. We're going to break down why you see these different factors coming together, I guess, in a perfect storm. The establishment admits now they're, they're digging in. While weaponizing culture even more, like having us fight with each other is going to help during a crisis, I really think this elite is uh, pretty insane overall. Matt Bracken is our guest. We're going to come right back and kind of give him the floor to break all this down and then get your questions and comments ready for the third hour coming up. We'll also intersperse a lot of the breaking news with him and get his take on what he thinks the different factions are uh, inside this new world order. I'm Alex Jones. Infowars.com is the news site. Stay with us. We are here trying to scare you. I try to get myself concerned because I just get so comfortable living with this tyranny and watching all the signs and Europe arresting people that criticize open borders and 
all the tyranny going on, all the surveillance and the government opening the borders, but tracking citizens in the TSA and just all the countless things that are going on and derivatives bigger than they were in 2008 and big mega banks saying get ready for more bailouts and NATO moving troops in on the Russian border. I mean, I'm going to go over all this with our guest today. It is just over the top what's happening. The defaults, the, 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 the economic bubble we're sitting on, the biggest the world's ever seen. So I'm trying to get myself concerned. I'm trying to get myself ready. Uh, and, and again, I hope we're wrong. I hope things just magically turn out better. But I think things run from bad to worse. Uh, and we'll talk about the bad to the worse with our guest. We're going to him in one moment. Speaking of this, I personally have been getting prepared. So I said, I want to really push preparedness, which I've always been doing. It's just going to be prepared for earthquakes, whatever happens, you know, economic problems, or you lose your job or whatever. Storable food is one of the most important things. The last 25 years, uh, the folks at My Patriot Supply Power InfoWars Select, we're running a special that's got to end very, very soon. I've extended it 30 to 40% off. Already the lowest prices at InfoWarsStore.com. We've also got 10% off all other preparedness items. The little... Uh, car charger batteries we've got, the, the be most high-tech, most affordable out there, the G-Shock watches, the water filtration, the non-GMO heirloom seeds, strategic relocation, the book and the film, uh, solar-powered and crank shortwave radios, very inexpensive already. 10% off all preparedness items, including all the nutraceuticals at InfoWarsLife.com. I just decided to do that last hour. We're going to run this for a week because I'm going to have to end the food very, very soon, but 10% off everything else. Sign up for auto ship, get 10% off additionally. Uh, orders of $50 or more, free shipping, InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com, or simply call toll-free, 888-253-3139. And the biggest thing is firearms, knowing how to use them, uh, having a safety plan, having friends and family you can count on, water filtration, food, things like that. And quite frankly, not living in a mega city like a New Yorker in L.A. I mean, that is so freaking dangerous, folks. And I, I mean, I'm telling you, I live in a big city too, but I live in a globalist protected city that they've got admitted management plans during all sorts of collapse to leave the power on here. But I don't even trust that. And, and look, I hope that isn't the case. I want to be clear. Infowarsstore.com. By the way, I want to get our guest on sometime. I want to carry his books. I've told the crew, I think we're setting that up. He's written a bunch of books. Uh, you know, breaking down different globalist scenarios that that, that that really get you inside the mind of how they would carry something like that out. Again, our guest is former Navy SEAL, uh, author, researcher, highly respected by a lot of great people who recommended him on the show. We really clicked when he was on enemiesforeignanddomestic.com. Okay, Matt, I'm going to try to shut up for the next 14 minutes or so before break. Give you the floor. You were saying that, I mean, the great story that's on record uh, where the little girl says, hey, when the water goes way out, uh, then we know that a tsunami is going to happen. And uh, they listened finally, but it took them 10 minutes. They you know, almost didn't make it. I remember whatever year it was, Galveston got hit um, by you know, a 20-foot wall of water. And they always thought it was a, a uh, hurricane or something. But some scientists today think maybe there was an earthquake out in the Gulf and that that's what actually killed those tens of thousands of people one of the worst disasters in U.S. history. But it's a great allegory, a great parable. Matt Bracken, please continue. Excellent. I think that right now the waves are already coming. And if you can picture a big dike system like um, Los, uh, uh, New Orleans or London, they have a big system of dikes and berms going around uh, that you know risky part of English territory. If they're made to have the capability, for example, of stopping, say, a 200-year nor, uh, North Sea storm, you know, like a perfect storm bringing giant waves down from the North Sea and high tides. But what happens if there's another earthquake on the, you know, coming from another direction and you're getting two waves? I think that's what's going to happen uh, this fall, winter, uh, definitely 2017. We're going to see a convergence of these waves that's going to overtop all of our defenses um, at the end of all of these scenarios as one byproduct is a grid down situation. Once our cities don't have their electronic oxygen, their electrical oxygen, there will be a big uh, bottleneck event, population correction. Cities just can't survive that way. They, they, I mean, they can't survive without power. They, they can't. We didn't consider this a century ago. Power was meaningless. People had ice boxes. An ice man brought a block of ice. And if you had, didn't have it, you ate more canned food. 
Today, that can't, our, our economy can't work. Uh, hospitals will become death traps. And the goblins that are already out in the street, you know, ready to throw punches, you know, racist mobster hordes are already out in the street. And this is when they're fat, they've got full bellies, their EBT card is working. How are they going to act when the EBT cards are not working? I think we don't need to be geniuses to see that this is similar to watching the tide going out and knowing the tsunamis coming on the on the rebound. You know, I, I, before I go on, I, each time I'm introduced, it always sounds like you know Navy SEAL is what Matt Bracken is, um, and I and it's almost to me it makes kind of causes me a little bit of pain and a kind of like a. Um, uh, I'm not a combat veteran. I was in Lebanon. You know, we were ready to go and do anything anywhere, and it was a dangerous job, even in training. Helicopters crash, people get shot, I, even in peacetime or in training. But the guys that have been in the teams since 9-11, uh, people need to understand something. Very few Americans are in the military anymore, but in the special ops community, it's been like World War III followed by World War IV followed by World War V. There are guys that have spent years and years of their lives in horrible places fighting for this country. And, 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 and so let's be clear. I don't like being introduced and, and, as Navy SEAL Matt sure, Bracken is. Sure, and that know. is on record that they engage in more combat, I mean, sometimes dozens of raids a day than anyone ever even thought about. The, the level of stress is just over the top. And it's the same guys, and it really, it, it, it tears up the families. Um, people would like to go for 20 years. I did not. I was just paying for my Naval ROTC uh, scholarship and having fun in the teams. I never planned to be a... a I just wanted to be a shooter and an operator. I didn't want to become a staff officer. So, to, you know, and after Beirut, that was going to be my future. So I got out and did the boats and other things. But um, I want to really, at all times, anytime I'm introduced as a Navy SEAL, I want to say, look, I was a glorified Sure, the point is you're a smart junkie. writer and you've got a really clear perspective and a lot of smart people respect what you're saying. Right. So and let's get into the facts. Of, let's get into the facts. Right. Anyway, yeah, the, there's no avoiding what's happening now. And some of the clues that it's this is going to be a big, huge year are that they're not even hiding the conspiracy anymore. If you went back 10 years or 20 years, as soon as anybody on any, say, talk radio show or much less network television, God forbid it would never happen, anybody ever mentions things like, you know, Bilderberg, they immediately go into, ha, ah, black, cons you know, black helicopter, conspir whoa, conspiracy, conspiracy, conspiracy. That's a way of just disregarding it. Now they're not hiding it. Now Davos and Bilderberg are just part of the news. Like, of course, CNN is at Davos. Why wouldn't they be? We are always at Davos. Now they're giving it credibility. Well, who are these, these guys? I'm, I'm not saying it's like the same secret society with the same secret society handshake. It morphs, it changes. There's a lot of overlap. You know, there's Bilderberg, there's CFR, Trilateral Commission. I, I always get a good chuckle in the morning. I like to watch morning... Uh, you know, uh, Morning Joe um, on MSNBC, and there's Mika Brzezinski. Look up Zbigniew Brzezinski in the Trilateral Commission. I mean, folks, it's just staring us in the face. And in, in July, they're going to meet in, uh, in Dresden, the Bilderberg Group. And I have to think this is going to be like an emergency meeting. And I wonder if it'll have to be relocated somewhere else, because by July, Dresden might not be a safe place for you know, the Gulf Streams and the Falk Wolves or the, the Falkers to fly in. Uh, you know, they, these guys are trackable. Now they're coming out of the closet a little bit. They're showing their hand. Look at all the presidents that visit Bilderberg. Uh, that's sort of where you'd get the secret handshake. You know, that's where they see if you're going to be a team player, you know, a willing stooge, a patsy. You know, Bill Clinton comes to mind, along with many others. That's where the elite of the elite, the super elite, that's where the super elite meet to see who they can trust to be their political front men and stooges. You know, whether it's the European Union, uh, national governments, America, nobody, not, I wouldn't say nobody, but most of the people that are even in the pool of electability are already approved by the super elites. This what you're saying about um, George Will. I mean, obviously, he's part of the club. He's part of that. DC super establishment. He's a trusted, proven, reliable journalist in the Soviet meaning of the word. You know, he's a he's a team player. He won't rock the boat. What the super elites hate more than anything is a loose cannon. Somebody who goes off script. Somebody who can get a mass audience, hello InfoWars, 
you know, this is this is something wonderful you've been doing for years and years. You can be belittled, you know, you can be called whatever, a conspiracy theorist, but it's pretty funny now. They go and cover Davos and Bilderberg, and, you know, there's an InfoWars reporter. Now it's suddenly not quite as conspiracy. Now it's just reality. And I think that um, this, this summer, if Europe is not in full all-out, you know, uh, Islamic versus European civil war, I'll be happy. I mean, I don't want to be right about these things. I'd love to be wrong about these things. But um, I, I, I wonder if Bilderberg is going to be able to even take place. Similar to Cleveland. This, if you look at this in California, what they're doing just at Trump rallies, imagine what a big purple bug light Cleveland is going to be. <laughs> it's, going to, it's going to bring the black block you know, out of the woodwork. And these guys don't live under bridges. They're paid. They all belong to committees of, you know, political action, uh, non-governmental. Yeah, you're talking about the so-called anarchists that are actually uh, malice youth brigades funded by the major foundations. Totally funded. And the money is, you know, you, if, if there was honest journalism going on, they'd be very interested to see, you know, who's printing the signs and who's paying for the hotel rooms for these, you know, supposedly uh, you know, uh, philanthropic, you know, uh, protesters. And these are actually Black Bloc and Aztlan, the Mecha people, those are the, the ones out in California. It, it, I don't know if people are familiar with Mecha. It stands for uh, the student, the Chicano student movement, basically, in the, the Spanish sp spelling of it. But it's the same phonetic or homonym for a Mecha, which is a match or fuse in Spanish. The logo of Mecha is a war bird holding a lit dynamite fuse. That's Mecha's. Um, logo. Now, it's been around since the 70s, this Chicano radical group. Look up the plan of Aztlan. We're in it now. This is a destabilization process that they're rolling out. This is the out of order chaos. Now they're creating the chaos. Just this like they the bring in radical Muslims in Europe, it's radical folks are brought in here. And then once they get to the universities, they are absolutely there with all their white professors who are the communist operatives, admittedly, with money and everything saying, yes, yes, do this. It is such a sickening plan, but you mentioned last week this. It's in the news today. I'll dig the article out in mainstream news. Europe preparing for civil emergency. Experts call it martial law, and they're preparing to suppress political speech in the next six months. So Europe is going under official martial law, civil emergency already. It doesn't matter. It can't. It's it's you know a, a, they're gonna their their plan is um, when the tiger breaks out of the zoo, we're gonna jump on the tiger's back, put a bridle in its mouth and then ride it back into the zoo and lock it back in. You know, good luck with that. They don't have the bench. They don't have the troops. Belgium was completely overwhelmed by what happened on one day. They had no bench. They've got nothing. There's no reserves. If there's a Beslan, a Bataclan, and a Brussels happening every day or week somewhere in Europe, the economy freezes. You can't just stay in these European cities uh, you know, even if the water is still running at that time, and live compl everybody just in there. Let me ask you this question: tower, tower blocks. That's what's going to happen because the economy is going. Nobody will be able to take a train or a subway, sure, and that's Matt, how they get to work. Matt, let me throw this at you: the elites you mentioned are very OCD. They're control freaks. That's admitted. They have a large plan. They admit this is part of the, their destabilization plan. They think out of this chaos, they'll get a diversion from their looting and what they're doing and use the crisis for more control. Order out of chaos. Well, order out of chaos. Not, but but, but here's my question. They... But here's my question to you. Do you think they're then engineering this, or are they unconscious of it, or are they delusional? Because if they want order, why are they bringing in tsunami-level crises or opening the door for it that I don't think they're going to survive? I think that... The way that they look at it, if, imagine if at the point in the Wizard of Oz when they see him behind the curtain and they go pull the curtain back, all right? Um, that's the super elite. That's Oz, the great and powerful. Well, Oz has a contingency, you know, the great and powerful Oz has a contingency plan for when Dorothy and the Tin Man and the Lion get there, which is they have, uh, you know, uh, uh, flashbangs go off, the whole theater burns down, and Oz gets away in a, in a Porsche, you know, with his gold. They're similar, the way I can I think of it, if you're on an airplane and it has like an engine go out and a, an explosion in the wing and you're leaking fuel, the flight crew is on the phone or on the intercom telling the passengers, don't worry, folks, 
we're going to make it all the way to uh, the Canary Islands. We're not going to run out of fuel. And they know damn well they are running out of fuel. So they chew everybody out of first class. They're all putting on parachutes. But on the intercom, they're saying, don't worry, folks. Remain calm. Remain in your seats because there's only about 10 parachutes. Just like the Titanic. The Titanic or the, um, the Korean uh, ship full of student researchers, as it was capsizing, as the officers and the crew are getting in the lifeboats on the intercom, they're saying, everything's fine. Same thing happened with the big cruise ship. Remember the cruise ship in uh, Greece? Yeah, go back to your room. Everything's fine. They never say, buddy, you better be running for the top right now because they don't want to be swarmed like a, you know, a, a, um, a crush of people getting into the one lifeboat. But the, the plan, as far as that goes, I don't think that they meet and discuss it in these terms, but a lot of people have the feeling. A lot of these, you know, the Davos Bilderberg crowd, what they're planning for is to emerge on the other side of the big emergency. And consolidate. I wrote, yeah, I wrote about this in, in my essay, um, Burning Down the House in 2016. If they are going to have a world war, which will wipe out all the bad debt, essentially what's happened is, you know, if you understand algorithms, it's gone vertical. There's no more level of debt. We've, we're at the end of Keynesian economics, the end. We've the holiday's the over. We've hit the vertical wall. We can't invent it. We've got zero interest, which means shoveling money to Wall Street, hoping to, but this is like hitting Frankenstein with the paddles. Come on, Frankenstein, you know, he's not dead. Look, Frankenstein's not dead. But if anybody thinks that the actual economy is going to get up and start moving again, they're completely dreaming. That's right. There's flies all over Frankenstein. He stinks. Arms are falling off. And they're just saying, right. look, he's they're never looked better. Obama run. said the economy's never been better. And it's like Frankenstein's head falls off. We'll be back with our guests straight ahead to get more into this because they admit, I have the stacks of articles here, mass immigrant waves are just intensifying everywhere as the third world sinks. So what's the chain trigger? Everything he's saying while he's talking, I just have stacks of news basically saying the same thing, but telling us everything's okay. So while he's talking for TV viewers, I'm going to be going through articles just showing you where they admit big defaults, state level, pension level, Puerto Rico, record numbers of people exiting the third world, the government just letting them in, uh, illegals coming in, get more than a Social Security recipient. Uh, that's mainstream news. Uh, I'm going to be going over all of that. I mean, this, this is an elite... They organize their main plan. They meet at different meetings to steer it. But because we've exposed it and others have exposed it, and you've exposed it, uh, more and more, they are going to a policy of just going, okay, there's world government. Or George Will in the article I mentioned earlier says, quote, a convention's sovereign duty. Oh, they're sovereigns. That means royalty. The, the Republicans, the party. That's like the inner party in China. The Central Committee. The convention's sovereignty, sovereign duty is to choose a plausible nominee, they decide, who is, has a reasonable chance to win, they decide who can win, not to passively affirm the will, the will of the people, of a mere plurality of voters recorded episodically in a protracted process. I mean, that is fascistic sophistry. I mean, it is total pseudo-intellectual tripe, a fancy way to say your vote doesn't count. Well, guess what, you little con artist, George Will? You guys have been acting like that vote counts, but because we're not selecting who you want, you say it doesn't. You say you passed a rule back in the 70s. We didn't try to use it till now. The last time you thought about it was with Reagan. Now, I'm going to go back to our guest. We're about to start the next hour, but uh, continue, Mr. Bracken, with where you say we're going uh, and what the establishment's going to pull and these different waves. The debt bubble, the massive migrant invasions, the social justice warrior, Ford Foundation, radicalization program. I mean, what do you think the elite's thinking? I mean, I got your allegories that were excellent of uh, the Wizard of Oz. Well, what he'd really do is if they caught him, he'd blow up the palace, have a pre-produced fake video of Dorothy being a suicide bomber when really he blew it up and flew off in his jet copter to his next base. But, I mean, I don't think they're going to get away with it. Look at the arrogance of all these people thinking they could just steal an election. It's not flying. I mean, I really think in history it shows that megalomania becomes a delusion in and of itself, and the elite's biggest enemy is themselves. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, the, uh, the jet copter. Um, they, the super elites do have a few uh, small uh, Achilles that are exposed. 
obviously, you know, if you're a Sun Tzu fan, you know, you know, you minimize and hide your own weaknesses. Well, one of their weaknesses is security and their paranoia about security, which is really why it's so rich when people like Zuckerberg talk about the need for America to bring in way more refugees. While, you know, he has a 700 acre uh, estate on Kauai on the North Shore, you know, with like Blackwater security keeping everybody out. You know, he's got his place to go. But uh, he wants us to take more refugees. Or the Vatican really with its 200-foot walls or right. the big wall they're building around the White House. But they, but they fly in private jets. They do not go tourist class on American Airlines, believe me. And they do not go through TSA security either. Now, that none of these guys owns a jet with their, except for Trump. It's interesting. Chet, Trump actually does own a big jet that says Trump right on the side. But Zuckerberg and the rest of these folks, they will never, you'll, you won't find a jet that has his name on it. It's all holding companies and leases and, and sharing and so forth. But when they're flying to Bilderberg in July, it'll be very interesting to see, you know, the flight, the flight schedules and then sort of untangle the uh, tail numbers because that's the big guys. That's the big guys. You can track them by their Gulf streams for sure. Absolutely. And they're building a world that will destroy them historically. It's like the Rothschilds at some level funded Hitler, and then Hitler did kill some of them in France. It's like... Well, they, they think they can control everything. They can't control everything, but I think that their plan is to emerge on the other side when the fire's down and the ashes are cooling, then they can fly back from Patagonia or New Zealand. Exactly, stay there. The They're all going to New Zealand. That's right. We'll talk more about your research, how we stop this with Matt Bracken straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com. Check out his site, enemy, enemiesforeignanddomestic.com. We are now into the second hour. I'm Alex Jones, your host, uh, Matt Bracken. As you can see right there, uh, let's punch up the side camera. I love it. I, I bet he thought that was like a three-minute break, not a one-minute break, but he's he's right over there when he comes back. Uh, we will uh, we will talk more with him. Really smart guy. I really enjoy talking to him. Very humble guy, like so many of those uh, great folks are. But in a moment, he'll be coming back. Um, here are some of those articles I was mentioning. As deadlines come and go, Puerto Rico's debt crisis grows. CS Monitor. A canary in the San Juan coal mine is what Bloomberg says here's another one puerto rico will default on government development bank debt again what does that signify again what will that mean and then as he's speaking here this is a short segment long segment coming up i'm going to go over some of the other articles about illegals to get more money than social security recipients that's official all of this um but but really overall there is a hatred of the West, of Americana, of free market by the elites. That's why they're desperately trying to consolidate power. Uh, Matt, I've been asking a lot of the questions. This is a short segment, but getting back to other points you want to impart to folks. You know, people should um, look at history in, in, a, in a lot of respects in terms of wave theory. Um, look up what a Kondratiev wave is, which has, is sort of a, a multi-generational economic cycle. Uh, postulated by a, a Russian economist at the beginning of the 20th century. You're talking about turnings. Yeah, and, and when, when people forget, when you have three or four generations on Wall Street that never suffered a wipeout crash, like a 1929 type of crash, they, their normalcy bias says it can never happen. They're like dodo that. birds. You know, They're like dodo birds. It's different this time. You, you know, that's the famous saying, it's different this time. Um, the French Revolution happened. Social change came. It was an engineered event. There was no huge protest among French peasants at the time, but the the uh, conspirators that had come from Bavaria, Weiss, uh, Adam Weishaupt, the, the original Illuminists, you know, they they um, instigated the French Revolution as a way of like engineering a way to be on top of that. You know, if you if you are if you look at the 1917 revolution in Russia, American bankers funded Lenin going to Russia, you know, the Finland station, all of that. That was paid for by American bankers hoping to get in on the ground floor. They're amoral, but a figure like the American uh, capitalist industrialist Armand Hammer, you know, so what if they're mass murdering communists? Who cares? We're going to be in tight with them right from the, from the ground floor. So you'll often see uh, an evolution in economics that's followed by an evolution in society. When the industrial revolution began, it led to factory work. Factory work led to workers living in you know, mass huddled, uh, you know, uh, slums near the factories, which led to unions. Uh, unions then were co-opted by the progressives and communists. But behind them, 
it's, it's, it's one of the strangest things is to see communists in bed with billionaires, you know, who are like the original Adam Weishaupt. They believe that society is perfectible. In fact, that was one of the other names that Weishaupt was going to give to his Illuminists group that was going to be the perfectibility society. Another one was the bee society, like we're all going to be in the beehive, and guess who's going to be the queen bee? So human beings can be figured out and perfected with progressive, super intelligent, super elites. So why shouldn't they also be billionaires? It's kind of perverse and strange, but on the backside of, of uh, the circle, you know, a lot of times the billionaires actually meet the uh, black block. You know, they both profit from revolution and rage and overturning. They all hope sure. to emerge on top of the wreckage after the tsunami. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Bracken, in my experience dealing with the black bloc all over the country, I've had them always punch me in the back, act like they did and trying to make some, you know, big deal happen. They normally get in brand new Mercedes, Jaguars. We have tape of this. These are all pretty much kids, the leaders of it, of, of, of rich corporate heads, and their kids are doing military service in America and actually know that they're taking over, and they'll admit to me, we're going to kill you soon. Of course, we're fascist. So they're even more evil than that. I mentioned some of these articles in the last hour. I want to just show TV viewers uh, some of them now and then also uh, read out the headlines for radio listeners so you can see this is happening. Puerto Ricans leaving island for U.S. in record numbers, CNN, due to the economic crisis there and the ongoing default. They're in a full-bore depression. That's in Bloomberg as well. Um, Obama budget $17,613 for every new illegal minor, more than Social Security retirees get. And they won't let Christian refugees come here. For every, like, 300, 400, there's one token. When 20% of Syria is Christian, and run them for their lives. Hundreds of thousands killed. Why would our elite do that? Ted Cruz's support softens among the delegates he counted. That shows folks are waking up on that front. Graham, Lindsey Graham, the queen of the Senate, says Trump would lead to another 9-11. These are the people bringing in the jihadis, funding ISIS and Al-Qaeda with Saudi Arabia, caught red-handed. Trump's exposing it, exposing the 28 pages. There's a sick globalist alliance with radical Islam, and they say Trump is going to cause it. It's crazy how they invert reality. Since I mentioned this, NATO deploys 4,000 troops to Russian border as the EU comm chief urges, quote, return to war planning. Meanwhile, watch Germans shut down leftist ministers probe migrant speech and chase him through the streets. But don't worry. The London Express reports EU military police carrying out extremely worrying civil unrest crisis training. And it's not for the Muslims, folks. They can do whatever they want to encourage the aggression until it explodes. So the elites are doing this on purpose. And I can look at history and things. They're insane. I've run into so many really rich people, I mean billionaires, that are either scared moving to New Zealand years ago, but they tell me, oh, the rest of the elite are nuts. You're right. They're crazy. They want total control. And they like to see us squirm. It's like entertainment. When you got 15 mistresses and all the you know, these elites with Bill Clinton flying to sex islands with little kids, and it comes out, nobody gets in trouble. I mean, when you're into screwing little kids, folks, you like, you're into blowing stuff up and killing innocent people. I'm sorry to talk like that, but that's who we're dealing with here. So I just, I mentioned all that, so I thought I would just, and, and of course, George Will, in his last article in the um, Washington Post saying, we are sovereign, your vote doesn't count, you are nobody. That's what he says. Here, let me say it in, uh, in uh, White Shoe Boy talk, what he actually said. A convention sovereign duty, that's their sovereignty, a convention, that's the party, I'm, I'm deciphering, this little arrogant piece of filth thinks we don't understand this. It just meant to sound fancy to you, so you just shut up and go along with it, like the queen with a stupid hat on. A convention's sovereign duty is to choose a plausible nominee who has a reasonable chance to win, not to passively affirm uh, the will of a mere plurality of voters recorded episodically in a protected process. It's like you come up and mug somebody and knock their teeth out, and you go, and then I went to your mandibles and massaged them for the lovingness that you would not ever have to deal with them and brush them. I took them from your mouth in a loving flurry. No, you knock your teeth out with a frickin' ball-peen hammer, you little bastard. And, and, and it's this type of garbage that I'm sick of.
I'm going to stop right there. We're going to start taking your calls in the next segment. 800-259-9231 for Mr. Bracken, a great writer, great brain, really impressed with his work. Want to have him on routinely, want to have him on the nightly news, you name it, even to pop in when events are happening. 800-259-9231 is the toll-free number to join us with your questions or comments on these subjects or for Mr. Bracken or myself. And then just briefly, just as a backdrop to all this, we're running a special on the best storable food out there at InfoWarsStore.com, power, powered by my patriot, the widest selection, 30 to 40% off. I twisted their arms. I'm able to extend it a day, maybe two. It's got to stop, okay, because nobody else has these prices. 10% off all other preparedness items from car jumping, little micro batteries and stuff. gets more and more miniaturized, works so well. It plugs into dozens of different devices. Uh, everything from G-Shock washes, a, a whole spectrum of the best gravity-fed and survival filters out there. High-quality non-GMO heirloom seeds, the widest spectrum of those out there. High-quality shortwave radios, crank-powered, solar-powered, you name it, and so much more. When you're moving around with cell phones, you need to put them in the little packages with the lead walls so that, you know, obviously you can't be tracked. Just as a rule, folks, for your privacy, those are there. Plus, folks can't hack your phone with those. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, or call toll-free 888 253-3139. Uh, EnemiesForeignAndDomestic.com. Before you leave today, I want to talk about some of your books because I can't wait to read those uh, with the different scenarios you come up with for folks to you know get inside the game. But we got about six, seven minutes to break. What other key points do you want to add? Where do you think this is all going? What do you think about Trump? What are other big observations you want to get out to people? Well, I, I think that every time that I that I, I see or hear, it's a battle for our minds. It really is. It's all about getting the herd running. Now, the herd can be run like buffaloes right towards a cliff. The people that are doing the buffalo herding, they don't plan on going over the cliff edge. They just want to get the buffaloes moving, whether it's the people that hate Trump so much or the people that love Trump so much. We're gearing up for a big collision. The people that are, are engineering the collision do not plan to be at the site of the train wreck. They're going to be on a jet to New Zealand or, you know, Chile somewhere nice in another hemisphere. The, the, I had a lot of great reaction after um, the show last week. And one person on Facebook said, said, oh, you went on the Alex Jones show. You've lost your credibility. And I just, I, was, I said, what? Do you think they would have me on Fox News? I'm not a script reader. To get on network television, you have to join the club. You have to go to your own little Bilderberg meeting, so to speak. You have to get invited to network, go upstairs and meet the big shots in the top corner office. And that's where they learn that you really are a docile puppy that will roll over and, you know, expose your throat and ask for a rub on the stomach. That you'll never rock the boat. You won't be a loose cannon. You'll stay on script. You'll, you'll respect the third rails and you'll, you know, promote the going narrative. It's basically not that much different from Pravda and Izvestia, except we have more flavors of propaganda. But they, but none of them really go way off of message. Now, I'm old enough to remember Watergate. I was working outdoors construction. The whole summer, they preempted every network channel. You couldn't turn your TV on and not see gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage. The front page of every newspaper for a year was Watergate until Nixon was thrown out. Nobody died in the Watergate. 300 to 400 or more by now, Mexicans died on purpose as a result of Fast and Furious. Benghazi is another case. Americans died. The president was hiding. No help was sent. It's not my point to bring up these old cases. Just to study how the media portrays them. If the media had focused on Fast and Furious, hundreds of Mexicans killed so that they could discredit the Second Amendment. During the time before Agent Terry was killed, Holder, Hillary Clinton at State Department, and Obama were on a narrative that I call the 90% lie. Every time they were on a uh, Sunday morning show, they would talk about how it's so terrible that 90% of the guns found in Mexico came from American gun stores. They were guilting well, us. And, and, and it's the fault of the Second Amendment, and it's the fault of these gun stores. These were gun stores that were forced and coerced Order. by the ATF. And the, but I don't, I don't even care about that. I mean, that's terrible. What I care about is that the media stayed away from it. How many Americans know that zero people died at Watergate, hundreds died for, at Fast and Furious, four 
died in Benghazi, including a, an ambassador, which That's is right. the equivalent and Cheryl of a four star general. Basically lost her job at CBS for being the only person in a command position to be able to sneak through the truth. And Cheryl let me just stop Atkinson. you there. Since you, since you bring this up, Matt, they use all this peer pressure like, ooh, you're discredited, you're on Alex Jones, or oh, Matt's discredited, Matt Drudge, he gets more and more popular, he links to Alex Jones. They hate this show because they know how accurate it is. It's reaching 28 million people a week now worldwide, 15 million of them here in the U.S., we're really a global audience. Like all these corporate guys go, too bad more than half your audience is overseas, doesn't really matter for money making. I don't care about that at the end of the day. Globally, I want to affect the change. That's the real value. But absolutely, it's a psyop. Like, you can't be for Trump. He's a racist. You're discredited now. People know the media is lying. How bad is it that the mainstream media, in, in an AP poll, also Gallup showed the same number, 6% trust rate. Don't they get they're pathetic and saying we're kooks is our red badge of honor? When, on network television, they've got fantastic production values, great studios, beautiful blonde news readers, uh, every graphic you can possibly imagine, reporters all over the place, but they don't tell the truth. The reason that 28 million people a week are watching Alex Jones is because you go places that they won't go. We look at them now and we just see Pravda. Now you've got you know uh, red Republican pro or R Pravda and you got blue Democrat Pravda. But when you've got George Will basically, you know, agreeing with the Democrats that we've got to keep this Trump out, even if we lose the, the even if Hillary wins, George Will's happier with Hillary. But I don't even see that as the problem now, because whether it's Hillary or Trump, by January, this country is going to be in a, in a whole new ball game. I'll be surprised if nobody takes a, a shot at Trump. Um, the other day, when he hopped the Jersey barricades to get into the uh, the, the rally that was up in Northern California. It reminded me of 1914 uh, in uh, Yugoslavia with uh, the Crown Archduke. Prince. Yeah, the, the bomb, it was a failure. They tried to toss a bomb in his car, and it bounced off and hit the, you know, went under the car behind. Then their security detail made a series of mistakes, but the, the, the conspirators thought the plot had failed. Gavilo Princep was sitting in a cafe, you know, drowning his sorrows at missing his big chance, the security details had kind of a snafu, and here comes the Archduke straight down the street where Gavilo Princep, the mission has already failed, it's an abort, he's having a beer, he steps out and shoots him. And that well, was British intelligence know. manipulating the black hand to fool the, the Germanic group into going into World War I. Absolute total setup. Yeah, folks, the West was pretty much the bad guys in World War I, and you see what it created. The next group of bad guys, Adolf Hitler in World War II, who was also financed by the British and U.S. elite. They're very sophisticated, but their BS is coming to an end. Look, I know most of you know what we are talking about is true. Uh, you've, you've got more experiences than we do. There's a, a lot of amazing people out there, but the general public still doesn't get how history works. There are groups of ruling predators who don't like freedom and don't like real prosperity. They want total control. Humans are the same all over the world. We go through the same patterns as our guest was just saying earlier. It's totally true. But we've now reached a crossroads with the weapons and the technology and the huge population and all the rest of it, where you have an elite that has passed on its, 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 its class envy. You're like, well, wait, the elite has class envy? Yes, against the middle class. So they're playing the, the giant unwashed masses off against the middle class, pressure from below with the elites above. That's their admitted plan. Zbigniew Brzezinski's written books admitting it. He's one of their top gophers, one of their top planners, one of their top generals. And so they've got all these different disparate groups filled with class envy, chips on the shoulders, you name it, none worse than the white knight social justice warriors who just want to see Rome burn, even though these fat, soft, stupid people don't even know how to throw a punch, folks. And I watch them just beat up the Trump people. They just stand there and let them beat them up. I mean, I don't know who is wimpier, but all I know is that is scary looking to me. I don't know what they've done. Is it TV? Is it the culture? Is it modern industrial sickness, like space sickness? I don't know. We're going to go to callers at the start of the next segment. Well, phones are loaded. Crystal, Shane, Billy, Andrew, Joseph, and others. This is a short segment, long segment coming up. Other points, Matt Braggins, I know you got cut off with a break, of enemiesforeignanddomestic.com that you want to make. Uh, and then also, uh, in, in, any rays of hope you see out there? Well, if if um, anybody goes to my Amazon reviews, 
you know, one of the most common things is that I saw this coming a long time ago. First book is about a false flag operation blaming, you know, right-wing militias for a massacre. Second book is about the Southwest splitting apart the country, basically fracturing. The third book, the country is completely fractured. Foreign peacekeepers are brought in because American National Guard won't fire on Americans sufficiently well. Um, but you kind of get the idea of what I think could be ahead is not a very rosy scenario. I, I wish I could be just writing genre fiction, uh, you know, the spies or adventure type of novels. But time is short, and we have to stay on the, the actual message because the water is going out, and we have to be that kid that's warning everybody that the tsunami is coming. And we can't reach everybody, but we can reach a lot of people. Uh, a hopeful sign I've seen in the last couple of weeks a little bit of is emerging above the surface, this fight between uh, two two Navy SEAL admirals. Uh, it's They're talking right now about a fairly parochial issue, but there's a lot of hate and discontent and tension among the uh, flag ranks. And I'm waiting for somebody, an honorable general or admiral, to, to be as honorable as um, Colonel David Hackworth was. He was a battlefield commission in Korea as a kid. You know, he did not go to West Point. He was uh, uh, one of the, I think, the youngest colonel in uh, Army history in Vietnam. He wrote the book About Face. He went on uh, national news shows and said, the way we're fighting the war can't be won. We're being lied to. He took his, basically took his uniform off and threw away his career out of a sense of honor, duty, honor, country, you know, integrity, the core values. And I, I'm not seeing that from our current generals. There are generals, and we can go by their assigned duty stations. We know who was on duty during Benghazi. We know. We know who was in Stuttgart. We know who saw all the flash traffic. If you've seen the movie 13 Hours, they allude to it. There are commandos on runways ready, ready to go and save the little uh, you know, besieged Alamo in Benghazi. Until then, we have always gone to save the Alamos. In this case, we didn't, because the president wanted the— uh, you know, well, a few weeks from the election, he didn't want a possible Black Hawk Down scenario. He Better also wanted weapons transfer. You want a weapons transferred into just into hide it. Just Syria. let that thing be overrun. Just let it be overrun. The terrible breach, breach of faith. And there are generals and there are admirals that know that we're undergoing a cultural Marxist uh, destabilization. You know, transgender military. Hello, can you say good order and discipline? If you were trying to destroy a military. Make it combat ineffective, this ruin its do. morale, drive out the best soldiers and sailors. This is what you would do. So why aren't, you know, I, I look at some of the famous generals that are always on TV on the Sunday morning shows. You know, even Petraeus, come on, salvage your honor, general. Write the memoir now while it makes a difference. Don't punk out and write your memoir. I agree, stay there, stay possible. there. But, but, but it's even beyond honor. You would do it for honor, my friend, Mr. Bracken. These guys need to understand, it's end of the line. You're going to get screwed over. All these globalists are screwing each other. See, they claim they're going to honor each other, but there's no honor among thieves. That's why it's so dangerous. And they're starting to figure that out, which makes them steal even faster, which accelerates the collapse that much quicker. Whoa, stay with us. You know, I don't believe this conspiracy is a Nazi conspiracy. But the Nazis were carrying out the latest civilization control technologies the world had. They envisioned the 10-member EU that would then expand in other countries. They wrote and talked about how they would put chemicals and things in food to slowly dumb down and poison populations before finally wiping them out, soft kill. They adopted from the Soviets, uh, when they had a deal with them splitting Poland, they, they let them in and taught them how they put in up to 10 parts or higher per million of hydrofluorosilicic acid in the water. That's in, that's in like rise and fall of the Third Reich, folks. That was in the Nuremberg trials. They would put uh, basically uh, acid-based fluoride, weaponized fluoride in the water to make people docile and also lower fertility. And then we adopted that. Our 68 Gun Control Act is taken except for five or six words, whole cloth, by Senator Dodd, the late Senator Dodd, who was on the Nuremberg trial and changed her 68 Gun Control Act. So I guess the, the Hugo Boss black uniforms or something, our elites thought that was really sexy, and they got 34 to 36,000, the numbers vary, in the rat line of Nazis over here to run basically everything, the intelligence agencies. Plus, they were on very short leashes and lived on military bases. Klaus Barbie, you'll run South America with the CIA, and, you know, this guy, you'll run NASA, and you'll... 
this is what they did. And my grandfather had been in World War II as a, as a fighter pilot, and uh, he, he would be as a lease hound out at uh, you know, oil fields and things, work for an oil company, and, and he'd have to go to a military base to get a chicken fried steak, and it would be like guys in there shooting their mouths off, oh, we really kicked your ass in World War II, we'll kick your ass now, there'd be fights and stuff. Because that's how arrogant these people were. But see, it's our elites, ladies and gentlemen, it's our elites that are the ones that are so sick-minded they're doing this, the Tuskegee experiment, all the rest of it. But think about it. I mean, I remember being a kid hearing my grandfather talk about all the damn Nazis, you know, at military bases after World War II and how much he hated them. And my mom would just go, he's a little eccentric, but, you know, it was all true. So that's what I'm getting at here is, this, is George Soros is a weird freakazoid Nazi collaborator that helped round up thousands of people. He goes on 60 Minutes and says he's not ashamed of it, and the ADL gives him an award. Well, these people, it's all about perversion. Like, to give a, a Jewish Nazi collaborator an award for being a Nazi war criminal, they think is really cute. Then they call Donald Trump a Nazi. The ADL came out this weekend and said, yeah, you're like a Nazi saying America first. Nationalism is Nazi. See, I mean, at a certain point, you're like, shut up. Don't try to import Nazism onto me when you're into it up your eyeballs. Anyways, I'm ranting. I want to go to these phone calls. <sighs> Please sign up for our free newsletter, exclusive articles, exclusive videos, things like that, because it's so easy for them to censor our platforms now. And a lot of times I'm sending exclusive videos and articles out just to the folks on email. It's one of the few areas we're deficient that we never really promoted or pushed. And now with all the censorship coming in, all the experts say go low, high tech, this is the equivalent of, you know, shortwave radio of the future. So, Infowars.com forward slash newsletter. I want to go to calls here. Matt Bracken, a lot of amazing points. EnemiesFarmDomestic.com. How do people get in contact with you? Tell us about some of your books. I mean, let's do a plug for all things EnemiesFarmDomestic.com. Yeah, the, my first three books are part of a trilogy. Um, they take place in different places. Only a few characters hold over from one to the other, but they sort of follow a... a um, uh, uh, an evolutionary narrative. Um, the, the second one is the one that's taking place in the Southwest. It looks like it's a lot of it's coming true today with the big street riots where people are waving Mexican flags. I've, I've always tried, I guess my, my novels are really to encourage people to look behind the curtain for the, uh, you know, the, the masters of the uh, super elites. I'm not saying that they run everything, but boy, they sure do run a lot, including media. And when you can't trust the media, I mean, you know, you, we're basically being brainwashed and most people are completely unaware of it. So it, it's up to those of us that see around the brainwashing, you know, to try to reach those of us, our friends and family that are reachable and let them know that this is a very serious time right now, extremely serious. The waves are already heading for the beach from several directions. All this political squabbling, you know, it might seem, it might seem uh, quaint. In a year or two, people might be saying, you know, can you believe we were worried about whether Hillary or Trump would be elected <laughs> you know, as they're gathered around a barrel with trash in it, you know, for a fire? <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the, the elites that are engineering this burning down the house scenario, you know, they, they think that on the other end, no matter what, they're going to come back and be in charge again. And maybe they will because they'll preserve their wealth through the disaster, through the emergencies. The, the first Baron Rothschild, he changed his name to that, by the way. It means Red Shield. They, he, uh, the first Baron Rothschild, who wasn't really a Baron either, <laughs> he said the time to buy is when the blood is running in the streets. And he made a killing on Waterloo because his messengers got to England first with news of the battle results. You know, these guys use war as a as a tool, and they plan to outlast everything. But this super cycle might be bigger than even say 1914 to 1918. This might be bigger than World War II. Those. We might look in history a century from now and see that World War I and World War II were sort of like precursor shocks to the big earthquake, which is coming now, because nothing is going to sure. be a bigger societal earthquake than a grid down. Sure, just briefly, though, you made an astute point about New Zealand, but also Chile. I know a lot of uh, really, really rich people that are going into these mountainous, very beautiful redoubts where they're building their own little mini cities with their own little towns, with their own imported security forces. For what's coming I and mean, I've gone to you know uh, uh, elite events where I've been a speaker and things where you know there's billionaires quite a few of them in attendance and they're going you need to come with your family to Chile and they're bugging out down there they're bugging out to New Zealand 
uh, and it is it is just over the top that, that that I've never seen such a migration out of Israel, out of the U.S. Uh, they're, the, 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 these elites are leaving, and they're going to, like you said, Chile and uh, places uh, also uh, like uh, you know, Australia and other areas, but, but especially New Zealand. So that shows to me they really think there's a big probability something huge is coming. Yeah, I, I, I um. I see them going for, you know, the, the safe places that they think that, and if they have a number of castles, you know, if they have a number, and I just, and not that these are survivalist retreats, but Clooney owns a giant mansion in Los Angeles. He owns a giant mansion in Italy on the water, and he owns a giant mansion in England. So, you know, he, he can move, and he probably owns some things that are, aren't, he doesn't publicly show. And he's just an example. He's only a 200 millionaire. So imagine what the billionaires have for their preparations. But, and this is more or less directed to young people younger than me. I wrote something called Get Yourself a 30-Footer and Go. It refers to small, cheap sailboats that you can buy for almost nothing in rehab. You know, if, if you're a young, young guy or gal and you're fairly physically fit and you don't get seasick and you wish that you had a bug out, that you, know, you wish you had a way to get to New Zealand, uh, read my short, short essay called um, Get Yourself a 30-Footer and Go, because there are some ways out. Everybody doesn't have to either be stuck in a city. I was about to say, though, or, if you're in a big mega city, it's important to live right by the water and, like you said, have an escape boat or a sailboat or a sailboat that's got a motor but also the sails. Well, right. They, when I say sailboat, I'm, I'm assuming that it has an inboard uh, diesel that can go for hundreds of miles alone, you know, even with no wind, enough to get you way out of the, the, you know, the reach of the cities. But there are, there are ways to uh, prepare, and uh, I, I think that, we have to kind of just give up on the general media. You know, we still follow what they're saying on the networks as if, you know, ha what they're saying is newsworthy. And I think we have to abandon that. I get my own information from, from websites like yours, um, Western Rifle Shooters, Gates of Vienna, Vlad Tepes. There are fearless people out there working for nothing. They're not, they're not, even, uh, they're not even inside of like a Breitbart type of a company with a salary. They're just doing it out of patriotism. And the information is out there, and the ability to link is super important. I admire Breitbart because they allow links in their comment sections. This might not seem like a significant thing in America, but if you're in Europe where you can be arrested for posting something on Facebook that, hey, I don't like these, uh, you know, all these Muslims pushing our women around, you can be you know, called in for a talking to in Europe. So being able to spread links is how, that's sort of the modern version of Russian or Soviet Samizdat, or the um, pamphlets of the... Of sure, sure. Well, Zuckerberg, as you know, he's been meeting with the communist Chinese censorship bosses, and they, they've announced at the Silicon Valley meetings they want to get rid of comments altogether because it's just showing no one agrees, and they've already gotten rid of the links. So, yes, these are serious issues we're talking about. I, I want to have you back in a few weeks again to talk about what the breakdown in cities will probably look like. I know they've done military studies around the world, but within 9, 10 days, most people will start murdering for food. Within about 15 to 16 days, 90-plus percent will start becoming cannibals. I mean, we're talking about a Vigo Mortensen road scenario within a month. Yes. Uh, and people yes. just don't understand that. A true bottleneck event. I wrote something that was maybe one of my most, it's funny because I'm not like in any of the legit, you know, name brand websites where they have to make sure that you're going to stay on message and not be a loose cannon, not rock the boat. Um, I like rocking the boat and I like, you know, I've always been a loose cannon. So I find a good home at some places that just take what I write. But if you, and I don't care where they are relinked. I say relink everything. Post stuff in whole. I don't care. Um, I did put my first, I put a couple of my books on free on Amazon. For some reason, I couldn't do it until starting tomorrow. But my, a couple of my books will be free on Amazon tomorrow. Just if anybody's that broke, you know, you can download them. I tell you, it is but, a freeing feeling, though, to not, I mean, because I always never worship money. But now I don't even care. I just want to get the word out and stop this and or save as many people as I can and just get my ass ready and get right what's with God. What's the point? You know, what, what's the point of we're, we're you know, we're like uh, running a, a, a kayak and windsurfer stand on the beach of Thailand. It's like, look, I can see, you know, getting your money back for the last guy to bring his windsurfer back on time, but it's really time to be it thinking ain't worth about dying. heading for high ground. It ain't <laughs> worth dying, especially when no. you got kids. Uh, I'm going to go to some phone calls. We're going to go to, uh, we're going to go ahead and talk to uh, Andrew. We're going to talk to Joseph, Billy, Shane, Crystal, everybody right now. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk to Andrew in Ohio. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hello, gentlemen. It's great to talk to you today. Thank you. 
Thanks. Uh, I just wanted to ask Mr. Bracken about what he thought about the Dreamer riots in California, and I was listening to your guys' analogy about the Wizard of Oz earlier, and it was really funny, and I bet another analogy could be made about these Dreamer riots, basically like the Munchkins being told to turn on Dorothy as she's trying to free the land of Oz. Sure, but, but well, these guys are ideological. You have to understand, we have gone so far, just to isolate the Southwest, for example, Every university, every college, the last 40 years has had a very strong Mecha outlet, outfit. Imagine a group called the White Student Union, and their symbol is a lit dynamite bomb. And the word means fuse, Mecha. I mean, just imagine that. It, you'd have to be well, in a La Raza means reality. the race. Uh, yeah, La Raza is the race. Mecha is fuse with a lit dynamite bomb logo. Well, for 40 years, university students have been graduating. They're now U.S. attorneys. They're judges. They're mayors of towns. You are never going to close the border if the mayor of an adjoining town is a traitor who is pipelining drugs and criminals through his town. Well, that's it. They're earth. criminalizing all the cultures. Mexico's fallen to criminal culture. We're falling. And it's not the great people coming in that we elevate. It's literal gangsters. I mean, they're always catching, like, the mayor's brother or whatever here, like, you know, sure. running smugglers through his house, and they're, like, torturing him and stuff for more money. But, and it's just but, total crazy thugs. And, and, and oh, man, I tell you, it, it is so the people wild. In, the people in La Raza and Mecha believe completely in Marxism. They are Marxist. They're pro-Palestinian. They're all the left-wing causes, you know, anti-Islamophobia, quote-unquote. But they are really hating big time on Whitey. Look up the plan of Aztlan. They actually well, have it compared to, to the like plan of San Diego. <laughs> I mean, do you mind the plan of San Diego? Exactly, or called the plan, the plan to Aztlan, but plan of San Diego. Exactly, and they have make no bones about it. They're going to wipe out the white guys. You know, it's the brown race. It's the new bronze race, which is ridiculous. I wrote something else called the true history of the Southwest 101. You know, the Spanish came in as conquistadors. They weren't loving on the Indians. They burned them. You know, they, they, they dragged no, them and terrible. burned them. But, but that's what I mean, though, is that it's just all twisted history. It's not even real. Very twisted. And, the, and Very this twisted. whole Oslan plan is like a twisted German, Austrian-Hungarian Empire World War I manipulation. It's like an old battle plan no, no, still I mean the, running. I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm confusing the plan of San Diego. The plan, the plan of Oslan, yes. that is the... The, this is what they still have as the Constitution. No, no, I'm, 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 I'm not the plan as long, absolutely, but it all, it, right. it all interfaces. Thank you, Andrew. Let's get in one more here uh, before we go to break. Billy in Texas. Billy, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to uh, ask Matt what he thought. I was reading up on the Mecha organization earlier, and I couldn't help but make a connection between what um, uh, Judicial Watch has been saying and what you guys have been saying about the Muslims coming in, the radical Wahhabists, I'm sorry, coming in across the border, and also the radicalization. How prone are these social justice warriors to radical Wahhabists? You have to understand that, 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 that it doesn't matter that women are chained up like dogs. It doesn't matter that they make them wear bags over their heads. It doesn't matter if they execute gay people or the communist Chinese kill gays. They don't care because it's, an, it's anti-American, anti-West, so it must be good. They don't care that weird, twisted, sicko billionaires are running it all and laughing at them. It, it, look, it's just, it, it, look, it is the way to sabotage all these immigrants and others to never actually go up in society. It's meant De to balkanize. It's destabilization. It's a destabilization program. It's intentional. It's like putting so many people on the life raft that it has to tip over and send everybody into the water. That's it. You know, you're saying, oh, we need to put 10 more refugees in the life raft. You say, it's already, it's only at one inch above the water line. No, we have to put 10 more in, or you're a bigot and a racist. The plan is to turn over the life raft and put everybody in the water. Uh, they're gearing up for it. Uh, anything else, Billy? I just wanted to say I really support you guys. Just got my first info war product. Been supporting my Hillary for Prison t shirt. And uh, God bless you. Thank you guys for everything you're doing. All right, God bless you, sir. I appreciate the call, Billy. Let's go ahead and take another call. I'm going to skip this network break because it's so important. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk to Joseph in Pennsylvania. Go ahead. Hello, Alex. Hello, Mr. Bracken. Welcome. Um, Alex, you, 
you and your guests are unbelievable, from Bracken to Billy Corrigan to Roger Stone to everyone. It's unreal, and I thank you. Well, we're all discredited. That's why we're exploding and they're dying. <laughs> we're discredited. Fox News and CNN said I'm discredited. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Learn more in 10 minutes from Matt Bracken than I can learn in 10 years on the television. Now, it is kind Thank of fun you. to watch the ladies cross their legs and uncross them. But, yeah, other than yes. that, you know, there's better <laughs> stuff than that on the Internet. I want to go see that stuff. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I just would like Matt and you to talk about uh, the troops that the U.N. just put on the Russian border and the other aggressive maneuver that was made to the C-130 by the Russian uh fighter jet i believe two days ago or something like that the barrel roll that's happened a bunch uh, yeah what do you make of nato's moves and and like fox News, i mean i'm not saying russia's perfect but we're they've got two or three bases we've got hundreds they're moving troops in they ran the color revolution there two years ago in ukraine trying to put crazy right wingers in they're, they're playing uh, catholic off against orthodox using again sociology classic anthropology tactics Admitting they spent five billion to do it, George Soros again yeah. quarterbacking it as usual. Sure. Ukraine, uh, Ukraine was a destabilization op. If you want to see what they're planning here, look at other destabilization ops. It's a, they're using a playbook. You can, you can see what's going to happen. Yeah, a they did the destabilization crisis, all over Africa, uh, Africa and the Middle East to put radical jihadists in. Uh, I mean, so 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 why do they want this destabilization? They already pretty much run the world. Why are they doing something so dangerous? It's the, because they're going to hit the, we're going to hit the wall. Mathematics, you can't escape from mathematics. Uh, over on Zero, he uh, zero Hedge, um, gosh, I'm, his name's escaping me right now. But, I mean, yeah, you can't fudge mathematics. You can't pretend that 2 plus 2 equals infinity. I mean, there's, there's the end of the, of, the debt, of the debt crisis is coming. And rather than be blamed for it, rather than be sitting in New York and be called down to you know, appear it. in front of Congress, they're going to burn it down. They're going to blow it up and That's burn it. it down. Oh, gee, it was an act of God, but don't worry. I've got tons of gold down in Chile, down in New Zealand, and when it's all over, I'm going to fly back after the blood is a little sticky from running in the streets, Rothschild there. They're going to fly back and pick up some more castles and estates at fire sale prices. Now, if a few countries go completely, you know, haywire, that's all right. There's plenty of other countries and plenty of more castles. No, that's it. Just like in Goodfellas, when they've maxed out the bar and everything they can, they burn the sucker down. This is almost a scorched earth yes. uh, retreat. That's what it is. It's a it's a mafia uh, burnout. It's a it's a mafia takedown. They're, they're crashing it. Then they can blame external forces, acts of God. Oh, it was a war. But don't worry. When when it's all over, we'll fly back in and pick up the best castles at dirt cheap prices. You know what? They could have pulled this stuff off before, and they've gotten away with it a little bit. But the fact that this is already the message has already gone out, the books are written, people are saving these videos. No matter what they do, we're going to reconstitute this country and others, and we're going to go get them. And this time, there won't be a George. You know, there'll be arrest some ninety-seven-year-old guard because some document said their name was similar, and take them to Israel as a Nazi, just as some. And then the ADL gives awards to real Nazis. I mean, it, it, they're not going to get away with it this time. I guarantee you, they have gone too far pulling this off, and I guarantee you the elites and their stinking families that are involved in it are going to pay. And I think it's important yeah. to let them know that, that no, we're it, explaining. It, you're going to pay. Go ahead, sir. It is. It's like warning It's like warning the Nazis. You know, we're, in, in, in certain circumstances, even POWs warned their bosses, look, you can see how the war is going. You can't kill us all. At the end, there's going to be trials. Well, I don't know what the end of this looks like. If it's a true bottleneck event, we could wind up in a new dark age. A plan to ride a tiger is not the same as riding a tiger. A plan to burn down the house and then, you know, buy the ashes for pennies on the dollar, it might not work out that way. We could enter a new dark age. It, in terms of cycles, you could say the biggest cycle, the, the, the one cycle is mankind going from hunter-gatherer to modern man. First, he had to master mass agriculture. Once he did that, a city became possible. They domesticated first plants, then animals. It's taken 8,000 years to get to this point, bare minimum, and now it's so unstable, all elites, all statisticians, all main engineers admit it. It's teetering even if we try to keep it together. And the right. fact that they're trying to use crisis to consolidate is the craziest. It, look, look, look. It's like the Deepwater Horizon, it's been confirmed, was ordered to dump seawater in because an executive 
knew they could save a million dollars an hour, basically, with the amount of concrete and mud they were dumping in. And they had multiple crews quit, so they put a crew on that would say, okay, dump water on it. You know, some guy in Houston says so, because some guy in London gave him an order. It's like, no, the engineers know. You do not dump seawater in there to pressurize it. I mean, it, it, yeah, just, it, it, it's just illusion. Just to save a buck. Just to save a buck. But, you know, the, when this crisis happens, if it becomes irrevocable, I mean, you almost would say a, a Stalinist North Korea 1984 would be better than a total grid down Mad Max. I agree. With every other nuclear plant going Fukushima, going Chernobyl. I mean, if 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 the plants, if the if the staff at the nuke plants, they have families too. They don't want to, they're not just gonna altruistically chain themselves to their position. And in three weeks they all blow up. Or whatever it is. I mean, I, I haven't heard definitively. I've had the engineers on the pinning it's, it's two to four weeks. It's not sounding good. And there won't even be an, a response like the Russians. The Soviets were able to I mean, very heroic Soviets. You can say what you want about the Russians, but they they have very brave men and women. They put hundreds and hundreds of firefighters and, and other great people on the roof of that building, glowing building, to work for two or three minutes. They're all dead in a year. And it took that just to cap that sucker. If we have runaway nukes, Who's going to, in a grid down scenario, there's nobody organizing a rescue of these nuclear plants. They're well, just. That's bleeding. why I talk about it's so dangerous, the phenomenon where people don't help each other anymore. When someone's run over in the street or a woman's been raped, people think it's so cute to only care about themselves. Seven million people in major university studies starved to death or via malnutrition associated with malnutrition during the Great Depression here. And 90% of us were agrarian and more than half of those were totally self-sufficient. We are now reverse numbers. 89% urban. 11% rural, 5.5%, half of them are self-sufficient. My God, 55 self-sufficient versus 60%, 50%. I mean, we're talking time bomb. Yeah, I, I, say, I say how much food do they grow inside of your beltway? Because that's the only food you're going to have maybe for years or at least months. Best case scenario, you might have to figure out how do I survive for just a few months? You know, when the pilgrims came over, some of their first colonies were lost due to starvation. Jamestown, they they all of them, everybody died. Right, and and if you have a mass, a giant city, the people aren't going to stay in the city and die. One of the th one of the um, little essays I wrote in a collection called um, "Trapping Feral Pigs and Other Parables of Modern Life." It, the 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 lemmings don't stay on the island where they overbred because of a great summer, lots of grass seeds. They don't stay on the island. They bust out of there. So when grasshoppers, which are the same as a locust, a grasshopper is a locust, but when a grasshopper population gets up so high that they begin touching each other, releases hormones, they turn into these big armored war, you know, flying war insects called locusts. They do not stay and die. So we're going to see some very radical transformations when cities are starving. It's going to be very uh, dangerous. Within months, to there's going to be all city. sorts of, if, if this happens, warlords will rise up. There'll be 50 armored vehicles coming down your street, heads on pikes. I mean, it's going to be hell on earth. It will be. And that's why I, if people are fit and can can uh, take the ocean, read my um, get yourself a 30-footer and go. If you have a little bit more money, get a 40 or a 50-footer. But even if you're a broke teenager, you can rehab a 30-footer that you get for nothing. Well, it's what everybody wants. There's some type of weird racial consciousness to want collapse and destruction, and uh, there's a lot of little nobodies that want to be rulers, so they've imagined how they're going to put on little black uniforms and be in the new commie brigade, and all you're going to get is your gut stomped out. We're going to be back in 60 seconds to finish a few final calls from Crystal and others. For our guest, Matt Bracken, I'm Alex Jones. Fourth hour, straight ahead. David Knight's coming up. If Europe collapses... It'll just be a total slaughter. Here in the United States, in the West, the South, other heavily armed groups with historical will to fight and highly armed, it is going to be spectacular bloodbath. Uh, and I hope we don't go down that road. We're going from that being a possibility to that being a probability. Mexico's got over 100,000 admitted dead, 70-something thousand missing. That's what a partial collapse looks like, and that place is a, you know, growing bonanza. And, and super ingenious, hardworking people, and, and it's still falling apart. Uh, this is what happens to civilizations, and all these trendies just don't understand it. I really feel sorry for them. And what I really get scared of is the elites running for the hills like chickens with their heads cut off. Let's talk to Crystal in North Carolina. Crystal, thanks for calling. Welcome. Hi, Alex. How 
Alex. Hey, Matt. Thank you so much for everything you do. And Alex, you guys have an awesome soundtrack. I love every song you guys play. Well, thank you, sweetheart. Um, I had a quick question, I guess, for both of you guys. Um, you know, as you can see, I'm in North Carolina, and we've been having the whole transgender bathroom issue blowing up all over. What a diversion. And, uh, my, uh, that was my question. Is this more just part of the elite divide and conquer? or This is, is level, this five level five warfare, five? ma'am, on the species to create total confusions where you're losing your whole future. We're going to obsess over bathrooms. Uh, Matt? It's part of the destabilization process. It's there. The Soviet Union tried for 75 years just to change the part of human nature dealing with economics. You know, you're going to go to the factory and work hard for the state, but you can still marry who you choose and you know live a normal life if you don't stay and get you get into politics. But we're trying to do something. Our social justice warriors are trying to do something far more profound than and and mag, uh, unbelievable, which is to change our sexual nature. To make people say, "Oh, if you, if you, you big 300-pound man, if you feel like you're Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, then I'm going to call you Dorothy. If I don't call you Dorothy, I'm a bigot and a hater." This is this is obviously not meant to succeed. It's part of the destabilization process. And, and taxpayer-funded the... pouring bleach in women's eyes that want to be blind, and everyone says how beautiful and brave they are. No, you're freaking nuts. Sure, it's a it's a mental illness, and. To treat it, I mean, if, if somebody walks around dressed like Napoleon with his hand like this and demands to be called Napoleon, we say, sorry, Napoleon, you have to, you know, <laughs> we're going to put you in a safe place. But if a guy says, I'm a woman, you know, a, a Olymp male Olympian declares he's a woman, doesn't get an operation, anything like that, we are now supposed to go along with the mass delusion. Say stunning and brave. It's mass delusion, and it's very dangerous. It's like the everybody's trained to say the emperor's clothes are magnificent. And a few of us go out there and say, no, he's buck naked. So I, I'm so grateful for your show because you've got the mass audience without selling out, you know, without getting the ride up the elevator to corporate, you know, where you, um, you know, learn the secret handshake. Uh, and I, I don't play that game and you don't, and uh, people are catching on. It's very important that this, this um, as long as we can, we communicate. The way Absolutely, and I'm just one person. There's so many other great people up and coming. What the elites do is as soon as you start an alternative media operation, they try to sue you, they mess with you, they send in infiltrators once you get bigger, or they try to cause infighting. And most people just get into the infighting and get diverted off mission. Just ignore all the made-up BS, move forward with the issues, so that when an audience tunes in, they hear about things they're concerned about, not, you know, I'm, I'm not CIA, or I'm not a Vatican, or I'm not a new, you know, all bull. Just here's the topics, here's the info, what do you think, move forward. And that's just yeah, the best advice I can give folks is just get on mission. It isn't be, be an attack. Don't get obsessed because the media attacked you. Be proud of people like, I'm so sorry I saw the newspaper saying you were a horrible person. It's like, that's an enemy publication. My God, I'm, I'm so proud of it. And it, it starts celebrating that, that the enemy's attacking. Matt Bracken, God bless you, enemiesfarnedomestic.com. We'll talk to you very soon, my friend. Thanks for the time. Thanks. Find his books on his website, ladies and gentlemen. Infowars.com is my site. Don't forget, we've got 30 to 40% off on the storable foods and 10% off on all survival goods, uh, only for just uh, well, 10, four or five days on the, on the other stuff, but only a day or two on the food. It's all I can do. is to encourage the U.S. Congress to take action to protect our country from its most imminent threat. Electricity would cease, the internet would go down, and the banking system. The smokescreen of national security used by government at every level. A strong America is the only thing standing in the way. The country only needs a little chaos. We have a fog that has descended on our entire nation. Hello, Mr. President. Now is the time. The average American family only has three days of food. We need to talk face to face. This is important. Sir, what's the mission? Disarm the population and restore order. Do you have any weapons inside your home or on your person? You had to give the president power to arrest any American by simply accusing them of terrorism. The vanity of nationalism will quickly fade. These are but the birth pangs of a new world order. 
I'm just so afraid of the world that you're gonna have to grow up in. This is a time, man, woman, young or old, when folks run and hide, or they pull up their bootstraps and they fight. When you sell your soul, it's a one-time thing. There's no going back. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel. Stock Market Documentary Channel presented.